If you've been searching for AI tools to quickly give your students feedback, stay tuned because I'm going to walk you through three different tools that can get you that feedback quickly and easily. Welcome to AI for Teachers. I'm Jen Twadell. Today I'm going to walk you through three different AI tools that will be able to generate feedback for your students. The first one is the paid version of ChatGPT, so ChatGPT4, which has a lot of wonderful functions that ChatGPT 3.5 doesn't offer. But I do have a video on the free version of ChatGPT and getting feedback, so I'll place that for you up the top if you want to check that out. The other two tools are purpose-built teacher tools. One is called Magic School and the other is called Almanac AI. Both of them have functionalities and tools within them that you can use to generate feedback on your students' written work. The great thing about ChatGPT is it can also generate feedback on students' math work and help give some tutorials on the next steps that students can do if they make an error. Let's get started. To get started with ChatGPT 4.0, you're going to head over to OpenAI. Now, to access the 4.0 version of ChatGPT, you do need a subscription. It is $20 a month US or $29 a month in Australia. It is trained on a significantly larger um, database of information, and it's also much quicker to analyze information and it can access the internet. So the information that it's gathering for you is up to date, whereas um, 3.5 is not. The other thing that I find makes a huge difference for me as a teacher is that you can interact with ChatGPT4 multimodally. So it can understand voices, it can analyze pictures, and that just makes it a lot easier when you're doing things like getting student feedback. The other benefit is you can access it on the web or through the app. Now today I'll be showing you that I've taken photos of some students' handwritten work and ChatGPT4 is able to analyze those photographs even of the student's work that is handwritten. So if you're working in lower grades or your students are producing most of their work um, in a handwritten form, obviously this is going to be of major benefit to you. So when you head into ChatGPT, you're just going to upload the rubric that you're wanting the feedback to be linked to. And with this new capability, that's really easy. You simply go down to the bottom, you hit the clipboard section, and then you can attach the file. So you can see there that I've put in my rubric that I want the feedback to be linked to. ChatGPT analyze the different aspects that are in the rubric. And then I simply prompted give feedback on the following students work based on the rubric provided. Now I was able to just photograph the students work. I was using the app on my phone. Photograph the students work. It is handwritten. Um, you can see there I do have permission to be using the students work. So I photographed their piece of writing and uploaded it to the chat and then ChatGPT was able to analyze that information and give me feedback on each of the aspects that are in the rubric. So you can see there that it gave me some information on text structure, vocabulary, spelling. Now I do find at first when you are getting that initial feedback that it can be a little bit vague. So spelling, there are, there are spelling errors present, encourage the student to proofread. Now you can continue prompting and actually ask it to give some more specific feedback, which it is able to do. So I asked it for specific feedback on spelling errors and grammar errors, and then it will go into the text and give actual examples of each of those, which obviously if you're working with younger students, um, telling them that their spelling errors probably isn't um, as useful, um, but giving some specific feedback is going to work a lot better. And I also asked it, okay, it mentioned that there was a run-on sentence, and I just asked, can you give an example of the run-on sentence and how to correct it? Now, once I've generated that feedback 
from the different aspects of the rubric, I usually prompt to turn the information into a table format so that it's a little bit easier to share with the student and structured a bit nicer. So I simply say, create a table in the first column, put the criteria title, in the second column, feedback related to the criteria, and in the third column, uh, specific errors with suggestions for improvement. So ChatGPT can then quickly take the feedback that it's already given to me and put it into these three columns, which I find much easier to then go through um, and share with the student and having the specific areas to work on and corrections to make in the third column makes it a lot easier and a lot better way to structure it. So that's what I would recommend at the end. And then you can have that table to then share with each of your students. Now, I'm not suggesting that with a student as young as year two, you're just going to print out this feedback for your students and hand it back to them. Obviously, it would be something that you can um, have a conversation about, show them some of these examples. But obviously, this took only a few seconds to generate. So you can see how quick and easy that can be. I can also see how this tool could work really well with older students almost using it as a tutor. So students can use these tools if they're over 13 and have permission from a, from a parent. So you can see how if they were able to have their piece of writing and get some feedback um, from ChatGPT um, or from their teacher throughout the writing process, um, it is quite a quick and easy process. Another great aspect about ChatGPT4 and its ability to analyze handwritten work and photographs is that it can also give some great feedback on math problems. So I've tried it out for addition, subtraction, and some multiplication and division, and it works with those types of questions. I have tried with some calculus multiple choice type questions, and overall it does work okay, but ChatGPT certainly is not known for its math prowess. There are other AI apps better. But I think if it's just for simplistic um, mathematics and step-by-step -step tutoring, it actually works quite well. So I've deliberately given it this long division question and made an error and then asked it to give the student feedback. So it's done a really great job in explaining the steps that the student has done correctly and then where the errors have been made and how to fix up um, the errors that they've made. So I think you can see that this tool could work really well um, like a tutoring tool or if you're wanting to look at your students work and see where they're regularly going wrong and giving them that written feedback, this could work really well in those aspects. So the multimodality and being able to interact with ChatGPT for with images and with files, I think really makes it a lot more versatile tool, especially if you're trying to develop feedback for your students. So definitely worth a, worth a try, possibly worth a subscription if it's something that you're gonna use regularly. The next tool we're gonna walk through today to generate feedback is Almanac AI. So this tool has been created to help teachers create courses, units of work and lesson plans but it also has an area called tools that you can go to to help generate different resources to link back to those units of work. So if you head down the sidebar to tools and click there, it will take you to a significant number of tools. Today, we're gonna to be using the feedback tool. Now in Almanac, your student's work does need to be typed because you can either copy and paste the student's work in or you can upload a file. It will even give feedback on a URL. So you simply go to the file that you'd like to upload. Today, I chose a file from my computer. You upload it to Almanac. Then in the next section, it wants the criteria that you want the feedback generated from. So you can stick in things like spelling, grammar, Maybe you're looking at developing setting or developing character if you're doing a narrative. And you just give it some dot points of the different areas that you want feedback on. 
and then you simply select the year level that the student's in and go down to the create button. What I really like about Almanac is that it generates the feedback in a really nice table format. It first just gives general feedback on the different sections of the text and then it generates a table showing you the feedback that's directly linked back to the rubric criteria that you gave it. So I find the feedback is quite simple. It gives some things that have been done well and then some suggestions for improvement. Now the great thing with Almanac is you can easily then export that information and those tables out into a Google Docs or Word documents that you can then print out or airdrop to your student. So this area does need to be typed out, unlike ChatGPT where you can have the handwritten work, but it is quite quick and easy to generate the feedback. Almanac is also has a free aspect to it and a subscription. Currently it's $10 a month so that you would have unlimited access to the feedback but you can also use it um, free, but with a limited number per month. So something you might want to check out. The third tool we're gonna to have a look at today is Magic School. Now this is a purpose-built AI tool as well that has dozens of different resources that you can use. So when you head into Magic School, you'll just see all the different tools laid out and to find the tools quickly and easily, you just go to the search and type in feedback and it will pop up there for you. So once you click on that feedback tool, it works similar to Almanac. You put in your student's grade. You also put in a brief description of what the assessment is and then give it that rubric criteria that you want the feedback um, to be generated to. Now with Magic School, you can't upload files. The only choice you have is to copy and paste in the student's text. So you just copy and paste that over and then you go down and you generate the feedback. Now the feedback with Magic School is structured slightly differently. It gives you a little write-up. So it starts with aspects that are a strength to the piece of work, areas that um, of growth, and then just some overall feedback of the mechanics of the writing. Now what I do like about uh, Magic School is then you can take it a bit further. Similar to what we did in ChatGPT, you can get the specifics. Give me specific spelling errors. Um, give me specific grammatical um, feedback. And it actually gives you some of those prompts down the bottom, or you can come up with your own prompts. So I like that there's a little bit of flexibility with Magic School that you can keep prompting to get a little bit more specific. So another great tool, you can see how quick and easy it is. If your student's work has been typed out, very easy to pop it in and generate some feedback. I think you'll agree there are some fantastic tools out there to aid teachers in generating feedback. Of course, all of these different tools come with free versions or subscriptions. So it's definitely something to play around with and see what you think is going to be the most useful before you end up signing up to hundreds of dollars worth of monthly subscriptions. But there are definitely tools out there, depending on your role, um, that will be well worth a subscription. I really hope you have found this video useful. If you have, please hit that subscribe button. I'm really trying to reach as many teachers as I can. If you're looking for any professional development, please head over to my website uh, is ai4teachers.au as I will be running some professional development courses and be launching some online courses in the very near future. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you at the next video.